I'm trying to make some maple sugar the same way as the First Nation people who have been doing it some 400 years ago. Like your walking stick. People being the first group of people who discovered the good things of sap and maple syrup. Uh, how did they discover it? That uh, they were there were a number of stories. The simple one that I like is say during springtime when they go out for hunting, they might be going after an animal by throwing a spear at it and they miss. The spear hit the tree trunk of a maple tree. When they walk up to the tree of it, they notice that liquid will be dripping out from that opening. And further observing it, they noticed that little animals like squirrel would go up to lick on those liquids. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking, hey, if those liquids would be good for the animals, maybe they would be good for them as well. So they started collecting some and then putting it onto the food that they cooked. And they noticed that the longer they cook it with the food, the sweeter the food would become. Remember, it was some 400 years ago. There's no places, uh, no place for them to buy sugar at all. So getting the sap out from the trees and putting it into the food, making it a little bit sweeter, would be the only way for them to get some sugar. The new way. Real tree, we don't go far enough for the budget or Chop the wood and you can watch the fire, make sure you don't boil it down or burn it. And the onions can go and get gathered some twigs and some branches and they keep the fire going. Yeah. Are you in? Yeah. I'm in. You're in, good for you. Because if you do that, and this was 1800s, you'd get a portion of the syrup as payment. But normally what we do is we'd have neighbors and put the fire between two different sugar bushes. And therefore, like the pathway may be the borderline but it doesn't really matter where it is because we're going to tap all my 700 trees, all your 700 trees, but we need a third family. So either we do it at where the four corners are or we find a family in Stillville who don't have a sugar bush, uh -huh. but have a cast iron pot. So they want a 
they want some maple syrup, they don't have the... They have the land. Right, the land, and then they would come and work for it, basically, mm -hmm. for a well, percentage. In essence, then we could do eight-hour shifts rather than 12-hour shifts. And that might be a little better. I know from working here that 12 hours is really not enough time to sleep. Because when you time you get home, get to sleep, fall asleep, wake up, you got to get back out here again. You don't have yeah. any time. So if I'm a farmer, I have things like horses and cows and pigs I got to look after. And for how many days? Uh, approximately 40 days. But over that 40 days, you won't be here all 40 days. Because the like today where it's frozen, you can go home. You don't have to watch the fire. But if the fire, if the sap is coming out of the trees, you've got to pasteurize the sap within 12 hours of it coming out of the tree, which means you have to collect the sap every 12 hours from the buckets and get it to a boil almost immediately from cleaning here. If you're lucky enough, as you saw the hogs, if you get the hogs head back here, you still have to empty it. So it's not a matter of saying, well, we'll leave it here and go get more because I can't afford a second hogs head. But if you can collect the sap and go out and do it, come back here about four hours later, start ladling it in, Start another route, get the rest of the trees, come back here, go out that way, cut the trees. It means that when I'm finished at 8 o'clock tonight and your family comes out tonight, you're going to have to collect again. So generally speaking, the, the mature male is looking after the trees, or looking after gathering the sap. The mature female is watching the fire to make sure that there's no uh, burning and doesn't just damage the, fire, or the, the syrup. If you let it burn and you've been boiling it for 24 hours, that's a lot. Yeah. The big thing is we need a thousand pounds of sugar per family per year, and that's enough to do your basics of, of living, such as jams, jellies, preserving meat, making beer, all the things you need to survive. Thousand pounds per family. And if I had to go buy that, white cane sugar is ten times the price of maple sugar. I have to sell something to get money to buy white cane sugar. I make maple sugar. So if I have to sell 10 pounds of maple sugar to buy one pound of white sugar, that's not a very economical way to do things. If I'm lucky enough that I make more than 1,000 pounds last year, and this has been a great year and I know I'm going to do well, I can sell off last year's sugar. Sugar will last about 25 years in storage, but syrup will last about six months. Once you open a bottle or a container of maple syrup, the bacteria will start to grow and you'll start having a not a good flavor. There is some syrup for anybody who wants to try it. Yum, yum. Mm. Oh, oh <laughs> are you Elsa? Are you going to make us frozen? Yeah. Princess, are you, Adia? Of your display.